Okay, so I was asked to make a tutorial on how I shade my drawings. Um, sorry if this is, sounds really awkward, but I've never narrated anything before. <laughs> and English isn't my first language. So let's just start. I'll try to be as quick as I can because it's currently 11 p.m. on a Sunday and I'm alone at home, so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to make a tutorial, I guess. <laughs> so, okay, uh, I'll show you an example first. This is, um, this is a drawing I did recently. I'm showing the re most recent one because my shading style changes constantly, I think. So, if I just remove all of these layers, except for the line art layer, of course. Um, and there's a lot of them, like that. You can see the the gist of it, I guess. Here's the layers, the two layers I use for shading. Um, it's the base layer, which covers most of the drawing. So if the just hang on. If the light comes from here, the shading in here, the sh shadows would be all here and here. And it just leaves a little bit of room for the light to wrap around, I guess. And then there's the second layer, which I guess brings a lot more depth to the drawing. Um, I use these shapes, I guess, to convey that there's fur there. And it makes it look furry. <laughs> um, and I usually do this in places that has deep shades, I guess. Um, yeah, like something like this. There is no light touching this, so it's just deep shadow. And it makes the fur seem a lot deeper. So if I were to draw one of these, I use my sketch tool and just... Um, starting out with a sketch, I usually do shapes so if it was fur right so it would start from here if it's the back of a neck for example for example and it's just all these shapes that in turn um all these can be creases in the fur like creases and overlapping fur. So if I just draw or sketch out from these quickly. Here's the finished line art. It's not really pretty, but <laughs> I guess it gets the job done. So, um, as you can see, there's a lot of shapes. Like I said, sh a shape here, shape here, shape here, shape here, shape here, shape here, and shape here. And if you follow those, it and like suggests that there's clumps of fur. Instead of drawing each individual for it will be a lot easier on you. Um, so if I were to start with the base of the of the shadow, and the lighting came from this way, I often use the selection tool. The one here. 
because they're basically my best friend when it comes to this. If you just follow the shapes like this, basically, just like that. We can even do this. And then you fill it in. But remember to stay on the line art layer. So you can do this. Really easy. Okay, I'm not gonna bother with the little details, but I can even add some like this. And while like this, you can, when you have it like drawn out like this, you can start with the finer details, like the undersides of strands of hair, or just small um, strands of shadow that goes from one line to the other like that it I guess I'm not really sure how to explain it but it gives a feeling of <laughs> fur I guess and I don't know why I started doing, doing it but it looks nice so I just do it And if you see a line like this, and a line like this, you can you could always make them touch, like that. And you can do something like this. So like in, in this drawing. In places like this, lines almost touching like this makes it look like the clump of fur is round right I'm not sure how to explain it it's really simple and if you do that in minuscule amount don't like overdo it because then it look pretty stupid so Simplicity is your friend in this case. So yeah, if the base is pretty much done now, you can fill it in with, I usually go with blue, because blue um, shading works with basically anything, in my opinion. If we go to layer and fill, so I'll fill them. And remember to go back down to your color layer so you will color your liner layer. <laughs> I've done that many times. So here we have our base and if we add another layer we can start with, um, with the selection tool again. The selection pen. And you basically go into the finer details go like this in places that I guess should be like that like this and if you do like this you can suddenly start connecting the lines and sometimes I like to add lines that don't really touch or go anywhere, but go back down to a different strand of here, or fur, like this, maybe twice. Or three times, I don't know, sometimes fits. And if there's a place like this that has absolutely nothing in it, and this, 
you can't add like a curved line and it won't look so empty anymore and you can even draw another curved line from there and over here you see here too it looks really straight here and we don't want that so if I do something like this I know I say something like this a lot but whatever it's not really pretty but it works and if you see here is three lines and that to me looks like a lot too much actually so I'm just gonna erase that and connect these two instead so that there's only two lines and this one is just hanging around because as like I said it's better to be simple with it than to be over the top with details and you're gonna be thankful that you didn't sit on all the details because it takes a lot of time trust me so like this remember two lines that don't touch they can sometimes touch like this but not if they're like super thick lines we're gonna do another curve like this And then a curved line from there to here. And then this one. I usually work um, without thinking about it. I know this sounds pretentious, but um, it's better with spontaneous lines and if you don't like it then you, you can always remove it and this triangle here I guess a triangle will act like as a I don't know a crease a crease of the of the fur in the fur a deep crease I guess and you can add lines to and from it so if you don't know if you have a lot of lines or not a lot of li lines and you need more lines to make it look better <laughs> I'm not making much sense but I hope you can make sense of it um, you can add things like this where it fits and it will look like a gap or a, a crease in the fur like like here there's a gap a crease here's a crease here is a crease and it'll just make it easier to spread out the lines in the shading and as I said I use the um, second layer of shading for deep shadow so places like this you don't want to overlap that entirely you want to only do small parts like this maybe places like places that a strand of hair will cast shadow on itself and in here and in here here you can even do this another crease uh -huh. I really love creases because they just make the job so much easier back to the Kiva painting you can see I made a crease here and I guess you can call these creases hmm, I 
actually didn't make much many creases here. I made like, some creases with the um, with the base shading here and also here. Here is a tiny crease, but it's filled in from the second layer of shading. But yeah, it just ma makes it so much easier to shade. And if I go from the strand of hair here, and you see there's a hair here, <laughs> hair here, and they could touch like this. So easy. And suddenly, you can see that there's a lot more dimension. And we can add another here. Another line. And another line here. Maybe. Maybe. No, that doesn't look as good. But we can add a crease and make the line of line of action I guess appear where this line starts so if we just curve that a little bit more like that that looks better because it draws the line up upwards like this and in this this is a completely separate um, strand of hair, so you can you can play a lot with that. I love curved lines over each other. <laughs> if you haven't gotten that yet, it's, it's just really nice. And then I usually add like a triangle like this, and that's usually all I do for this for these ones. Maybe another one for here because that's all it needs and you can same as you can do the same here over here and it won't look stupid another curved line here just if if the clump of fur is um wide like this and this. You can almost always use these curved lines going over the entire thing. In my opinion, you can do that. And here I can even add another crease so that we can add this line, connect that line to this. Like that. We don't even need to do much here, just another line like this. And do this. It's just really testing it out and seeing if it looks good and if it looks good great if it doesn't then you just remove the line and start fresh here you can see i drew a line here so we'll add a crease right here that makes the line make sense we can even do it here And here, you can see I made the, I guess the lines overlap. I'm not sure why I do it, but yeah, I do. So I can do this. <laughs> and this again. Curve lines. So easy. And a triangle again. Ta-da. And another crease here. I'm just calling them creases. I'm, I'm not really sure what they are. I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring in the background, but 
I hope you can. <laughs> can't. I hope you can't. And these creases can lead with a, just a stray line up here that just goes here and doesn't touch another strand of hair. It just suggests that it does. And that's my favorite thing, when something suggests to your eyes that it does something, but it doesn't actually. Does that make sense? And we can add a line here. And especially here. And here. And here. So everything connects. It's not the prettiest thing, but like I said before, it works. If as long as it conveys what I'm trying to convey, it's fine. There's a lot of open space here around here. So I might actually just draw a line from here to here and fill that completely in because there's a lot of negative space yeah negative space and connect that to that and this to that and often I as you may have seen <laughs> in this video I flip the I flip the canvas a lot, and that just gives a new perspective about where to place things, and makes you more aware of the of your mistakes. So that's what I why I do it so much in my speed paints. Probably knew that already, but if you didn't, you know, you need some you know something new now. That's great. So. I guess this is basically finished. I mean, it's not, but um, it's currently 11.46 and this tutorial is dragging on longer than ever. So <laughs> we're just going to go to our separate layer under the line of layer, go to layer and fill with the same color as the base color. So here's the base and here's the second layer. You can see when I remove the second layer, it looks pretty flat. I mean, it looks okay, but it looks very flat. But when I add it, it gives it and put it some puts it put it on multiply. It gives it a lot more depth than it used to be. So yeah, there it is. I usually use multiply, but you can go through all of the modes and see which one you like the best um, and sometimes I'll add I go to effect and add a fringe so if you zoom in you can see there's a tiny a border around the painting around the color yeah and you just I don't know it looks good <laughs> add that to the other one too That makes it look pretty nice, I think. And I'm just gonna go over this pretty quickly, but hues are a pretty good thing to use too. So, um, if if you have a background or something, or there's an atmosphere you're trying to reach, um, for example, dark places or nice sky or something then you might use a blue a blue sh shadow or in a dark animal but on a light animal like a brown animal you might want to use yellow or orange or red as an as a color and then you go to filter hue and saturation and you can just play around with it like this you see how if i move it to the end where there's like red and orange it changes the atmosphere completely. It makes it look like it's a sunset. That the animal is standing in a sunset or something. But if I move it to a cooler color, like blue, like it was, it makes it seem more like a 
cold climate, I guess, or the night sky or something. And you can, uh, both of the colors, no, both of the bases, both of the shadows, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be the same color. The base could be blue and the other, the other shadow could be red, for example. I mean, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad either. It just depends on what the shadow reflects. Like if the... I can't think of any examples. But you know what I mean. I hope you know what I mean. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this wasn't too bad. <laughs> um, if you want to see more tutorials, then just write them in the comments, and I'll see you later.